another episode from the clinic and today we have in our company Dr. Jack Lowen. Hi doctor. Hi. We're very welcomed and pleased to have you with us among uh, in our program today. And uh, first I would like you to introduce yourself for the doctors that are watching you. Right. I'm Dr. Jack Lewin. I'm a physician from the United States. I uh, practice medicine in uh, Hawaii, in California, uh, in Washington, D.C., and now I live in New York City. Um, I've spent uh, most of my career focused on cardiology-related matters and, and cardiovascular disease. And uh, as such, I, I'm really excited to be here today to talk to you about heart disease and, and diabetes. diabetes. Yes. These are two common areas of intersection. Remember that cardiovascular disease, you know, na mainly heart attacks and strokes, but other heart disease, is still the number one cause of morbidity and mortality in the world. Okay. And so it's a very serious problem. When you add diabetes to that, it's, it's even uh, a double whammy. It's yeah. much, much worse. Diabetes now in some parts of the world, like here in the Middle East, can affect as much as one out of three people. Yes, and it's becoming true. more frequent and more common. Part of the reason for that is that, I mean, diabetes, is, there are two types, obviously, that, that, that occur. Type 1 diabetes is where an autoimmune process destroys the beta cells in the pancreas, and the patient, therefore, has no insulin production. Yes. So they need insulin to survive, obviously, for the rest of their lives. Type 2 diabetes is a genetic disorder inherited from somebody in the family yes. um, that um, uh, gets uh, is accelerated in its in its manifestation when somebody gains weight or has a diet that is high in carbohydrates and sugars um, uh, and or uh, ha you know con gets involved with other risk factors like lack of exercise and low and, and, and poor activity so today why is that why is diabetes such a problem well you know um, we used to work harder we used to eat a lot healthier than we do today yes. and and uh, so the world has changed, and that has accelerated the the not only the rate of, of inc the uh, incidence of diabetes, but also um, how fast diabetes progresses to comorbidities. And the comorbidities of diabetes are very serious: neuropathy, often leading to amputations of yes. the extremities; um, retinopathy, often leading to blindness; ne nephropathy, which uh, results in the very expensive and difficult problem of of having to do dialysis for the rest of your life yes but even but the most significantly um, the the, uh, the comorbidities that worry me the most are the cardiovascular ones heart attack and stroke uh, here's what I would like to share with doctors um, when you we'll, we'll put heart disease on the side now we're doing a lot of wonderful things with stenting and with you know if necessary b bypass surgery and with the, with both you know, medical procedures and surgical procedures as needed, yes. as well as other mm. prevention factors. But with diabetes, I'd like to talk a little bit about this because diabetes itself is accelerating the, the statistics around mortality with heart disease. Yes. You know, for, for 20 or 30 years, we've seen such a drop in mortality with heart disease. We've done a lot of wonderful things in, yes. in the cardiovascular medicine and saved millions and millions of, of lives. lives. Un unbelievable progress and scientific progress. When I, when I was in training um, as a physician, if somebody had a heart attack, we put them to bed for weeks. Um, we yeah, gave yeah. them oxygen and morphine. That was it. That was the therapy. You know, so what we do now is amazing. We're, it's life-saving and wonderful stuff. Um, I'll put that on the side to say that progress is great. And we, we saw so much reduction in morbidity and mortality, we thought that cancer would now be the number one cause of mortality. But it's, not. <laughs> but it's not. And here's the reason why. The rise of diabetes and its acceleration of, of heart disease is causing the stats to go the wrong direction. Yes. So heart disease remains the number one killer in the world today. Now the problem I think with diabetes, I, I really respect my colleagues in endocrinology who take care of diabetes most of the time, as well as primary care doctors, uh, internal medicine doctors, family doctors, and so forth. But I think cardiologists need to get involved with the care of diabetes now because of its impact on uh, accelerating heart disease. And here's why that's important. Traditionally, we've treated diabetes as a disease that you know is, should be uh, treated on, on terms of glucose levels and hemoglobin A1C, which is a surrogate for glucose uh, in the blood. And those are important. You do have to monitor glucose and hemoglobin A1C. Mm -hmm. if, those, if either one of those goes up or bo they both go up together, 
But if they both rise to abnormally high range, that's that's a, a sign that you're you're at risk for all those comorbidities and for heart disease. Yeah. But diabetes is a much more complex disease than just glucose and hemoglobin A1C. Those are markers. They're almost like signs or symptoms of the disease. Yes, but they're not the core of it. No, the disease is a metabolic disease. And I would like doctors to consider diabetes now a personalized disease, one that you have to decide th what the care is based on a complex array of biomarkers and clinical factors that are different in individuals. Diabetes is caused, uh, type 2 diabetes, by more than 20 genes that we know of, maybe more genes involved in that. And so the manifestation of diabetes is different in each person in, uh, and it can be quite different. Uh, in some parts of the world, somebody who is very thin um, can have serious diabetes effects. In other parts of the world, obesity seems to promote diabetes. Remember this, though. If you don't have the genetics for diabetes, even if you get very, very fat, you won't have diabetes. Yes. <laughs> you have to have the genetics. In diabetes, I like to think that there are three areas of metabolism <coughs> underlying uh, the disease that need to be examined separately and, and carefully with, with unique biomarkers and treated so that we're personalizing the, 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 the care and, ca and, and creating the most beneficial therapeutic result. The first area is the, the risk of insulin resistance. Insulin resistance is, is um, caused by the uh, receptors for, for insulin on the cells and, and the liver itself as a, re as a receptor of, of uh, the message. That when carbohydrates enter the bloodstream, um, the body alerts the pancreas to secrete insulin uh, to get the blood, the, the, the insulin out of the, uh, into the cells and the glucose into the cells so that the glucose in the bloodstream drops rapidly. And that's because glucose in the blood is extremely inflammatory. It's almost like you're putting acid in your bloodstream. Yeah. It's burning out the organs. It's destroying the endothelium, the lining of the cells. And uh, so that's important. When, when, uh, uh, when somebody gets diabetes uh, and they start to gain weight, um, the, the fat in your intestine, visceral fat, starts to secrete hormones okay. that do amazing damage to the body. And some of those hormones create hypertension. Some start to create atherosclerosis and uh, the risk cardiovascular risks. Um, and uh, there's some, th anytime cells multiply, uh, any kind of cell that's multiplying, some of them become cancer cells. And the body cleans those up by, uh, by the use of macrophages, which go and destroy those cancer cells. And, and uh, that's a normal process in the body. But when fat is developing, particularly here in, the, in this part of the belly, inside the belly, the visceral fat, um, those hormones, you know, uh, the, the rare turn to a cancer cell creates, um, you know, uh, biomarkers that cause total body inflammation. And that inflammation actually damages the endothelium of, the, of all the blood vessels in the body. So let's think about what to do here because the, the, the progress of, of the uh, of, uh, adipose cells multiplying, even if you don't get fat, pre uh, 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 sorry, ad adipose cells, ad adipocytes, okay, pre, pre adipocytes, secrete these, these neg neg negative hormones even if you don't get fat. Yes. Okay, and the result is that uh, hormones go out that actually produce insulin resistance. That means that the, you need more insulin to get the glucose out of the blood. So that means the pancreas has to secrete more insulin and the beta cells in the pancreas actually start to get tired. They get fatigued because they're working so hard. Meanwhile, that extra insulin that's producing produces more fat, and more fat produces more of those negative hormones. Yes, and, and that it's produces an infinite loop. You've got an infinite self-feeding loop. But in, in individual patients, the factors are different. Some people can you you can actually use medications to reduce insulin resistance, um, uh, and uh, in you can measure a hormone called adiponectin, and if that is dropping, you know that the insulin resistance is growing. Yes. And you can treat the patient with uh, medications which like, like pioglitazone, which actually tend to reduce that insulin resistance. Meanwhile, you can look at the beta cells, and you can determine if they're so fatigued that they aren't really producing insulin, you can begin to use small doses of insulin to give the beta cells actually a break. It's almost like you give them a little, you let them relax a little bit more than yes. they would, and they start to recover. Meanwhile, in terms of the, the development of the, 
adipocytes and the adipogenesis factor there, there are also a number of and medications and factors that can actually reduce that process and help lose weight, like SGL2, SGLT2 drugs, GLP-1 drugs have now been fantastic in terms of causing weight loss and lowering sugar in, in the bloodstream. So there are, there are ways to personalize and individualize the treatment of diabetes that we need to take on in cardiology because otherwise we're the recipients of patients with heart attacks and strokes that we could have participated in preventing. Yes. So it's a, it's a whole big world out there. There's also an, a hormone called pro-insulin. Yes. Uh, we don't measure it. We don't use it in, in, uh, in our medical practice right now. But it is available, and I'm promoting trying to get this test to be more commonly available because pro-insulin um, measures tell you when type 2 diabetes is de developing and years before the diabetes develops. Mm. So even in the early years, five years before maybe your glucose levels rise, your hemoglobin A1C rises, you can already be treating that type 2 diabetes and preventing it from accelerating. And when diabetes does develop in its early stages, if you use the right combination of medicines tailored to the individual person based on the biomarkers that I'm t I was referring to, yes. you could de-escalate the diabetes and the patient can appear to be completely normal without diabetes for years. Now they have to go on a diet and exercise program at the same time to fully accomplish that. But there's hope here. And it's really important for physicians to know that in cardiology, that if we're working on uh, you know preventing cardiovascular disease, we also have to work on very carefully on diabetes. So. Yes. It's a big area of opportunity. Yes. Uh, thank you so much, doctor, for your valuable information. I'm sure that all doctors would be, I mean, very um, have adding uh, added knowledge with your information. Thank you so much. And we'll and bring more back to uh, CardioAlex next year and the year after, and we'll we'll take some of the progress we're learning and and make it available to the doctors. Yes, that would be our, our pleasure. Thank you so much, and uh, thank you for being on our show. And we hope you enjoy your stay in Egypt and in yeah. Cardio Alex. Thank you to, uh, you know, Dr. Sobi and all the people here at Cardio Alex, but also the people of Egypt for making us feel so welcome and so much at home. Thank you, thank so, you much. so much. Thank you so much.